You know what you're getting with Toyota's Hilux pickup. Something that'll take whatever you can throw at it. This smarter, more efficient Euro 5 compatible version is now equipped to do that with a bit more style, an extra dose of high tech and a more frugal set of running costs. But don't worry, it's as tough as ever. Now, if you want a vehicle that's tough and pretty unstoppable for work as well as private use, then it's difficult to think of a better place to start your search than with Toyota's Hilux pickup. This, after all, was the vehicle that Jeremy Clarkson and Top Gear drowned through from the top of a tower block and still drove home. It's the only vehicle to have driven to both North and South Poles. It is, in short, from suburban builders to Libyan freedom fighters, a vehicle trusted the world over to get the job done. It's been hugely successful for Toyota over six generations, dating all the way back to 1972, uh, with well over 12 million sales across 164 countries worldwide, making this the brand's second best-selling model of all time. But the Hilux has never ruled the UK pickup market, something Toyota aimed to put right when this sixth generation version was launched in 2005. Now, early variants of this model were handicapped by feebly powered engines, but in more recent years, the Japanese company has upped the ante under the bonnet and at the end of 2011, improved the packaging a little uh, to create a revised model uh, that would be better able to go head to head with its closest rival, a revised version of the Nissan Navara, as well as all new pickups from Ford, Mazda and Volkswagen. Of course, the changes to this revised model were more than skin deep. That sleeker front end concealed a uh, more frugal range of Euro 5 compatible diesel engines claiming class leading emissions. Now add that and a dash of high tech equipment to the Hilux's established virtues of uh, a car like interior, unsurpassed off road ability and practical loading capacities and you have a package that promises to be hard to beat. There's something about climbing aboard and driving a Hilux that makes you come over all crocodile dundee. As with all the toughest pickups, you perch up high, bearing down on other road users with authority. That's the perception anyway. But early versions of this sixth generation model didn't add much substance to it, equipped as they were with uh, a feeble 101 brake horsepower uh, engine. Now that's not much use when you've got a vehicle weighing three tons. But things uh, are, are very different now. The 2.5 D4D diesel in question now powers out 142 brake horsepower. And if that's not enough, then you can opt for the three litre 169 brake horsepower D4D diesel that I've got here uh, that can be ordered with either manual or automatic transmission. Across the range, Resta 60 will take somewhere between 12 and 13 seconds on the way to a top speed of 106 miles an hour though as you approach that, there'll be plenty of noise from these huge door mirrors. Most importantly, there's 343 Newton meters of torque of pulling power uh, from the manual versions of both of the diesel engines. And uh, that's enough to uh, cope with a payload of up to 1,060 kilograms, depending on the variant you select. It's also enough to tow a brake trailer of up to 2,500 kilograms. Though if you're gonna make full use of that capacity, then you might have to think about fitting a tachograph and complying with heavy truck driver's hours regulations. Now, uh, these figures aren't the best in class, but they'll be sufficient for most operators who will also appreciate the reasonably tight 12.4 metre turning circle. Like most pickups, this one feels like an old school SUV from behind the wheel, mainly due to the long throw 5 speed gearbox, this solid ladder frame chassis and the utilitarian leaf sprung rear suspension necessary for durability and the accommodation of heavy loads. Now that can make the ride feel a little harsh at times, but it does improve a bit if you've a heavy load in the back to compress it all. Either way, the road going experience is a fair bit better all round than that served up by previous generation Hiluxes, thanks to the adoption of a modern double wishbone front suspension setup. What hasn't changed is this Toyota's unmatched off-road ability. Hilux uh, models have only had four-wheel drive since 1979, but since then, this vehicle has established itself as the pickup to beat in the rough stuff. 
Now, uh, this uh, Toyota has a part-time four-wheel drive system. It operates in rear-driven two-wheel drive uh, for most of the time on tarmac. Um, but uh, you can switch to four-wheel drive on the fly at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour if you're about to turn onto uh, a muddy track, for example. Now, uh, once you're in four-wheel drive, if conditions get really boggy, then you're also going to want to consider the further possibility of switching from high to low range. And that's something that you can also do on the fly, on the move, but this time at much lower speeds of up to five miles an hour. And once that's engaged, you really can start to think about going almost anywhere. Though, if I actually was chasing Buffalo across the Serengeti, I'd want to be in one of the 2.5 litre D4D models. These variants further benefiting from a rear diff lock to keep traction going through the back wheels when stuff uh, gets really mucky. Now, um, all Hilux models, though, are capable of heroics off-piste. Uh, this vehicle's high torque output means that the engine can keep going at uh, well, not much more than tick over during really steep ascents and descents. And these are further aided by very good approach and departure angles of 30 degrees and 22 degrees respectively. There's also a useful uh, ramp angle of up to 25 degrees. There's uh, 212 millimetres of ground clearance, and that makes possible a potential wading depth of up to 700 millimetres. And when all the off-road stuff's finished, well, as you shift back from four into two-wheel drive and join the tarmac again, Toyota's clever ADD automatic disconnecting differential system will cut in. It's able to engage or disengage the front axle drivetrain, uh, contributing to uh, uh, more efficient fuel economy and lower noise levels on tarmac. Now, with the increase in sales of pickups to people who use them as a lifestyle statement, looks have become a more significant factor on modern vehicles of this kind. Now this one used to need a bit of dressing up before it was ready to assume any kind of high street cred. But thanks to a package of aesthetic changes that have seen a complete restyle from the A-pillars forward, today's Hilux stands out a little more. So uh, you've got a restyle of the bonnet, the front grille, the headlamps and the bumper. And uh, it's all intended to give the vehicle a bit more overtaking presence. As with most pickups, there's a choice of single or double cab options, plus a compromise uh, extra cab model offering a couple of occasional rear seats. Now, 70% of UK buyers choose the double cab variant, so that's the one we're looking at here. Now, with the double cab, you get a standard of rear seat space that Toyota reckons is as much as you'd find in an upper medium class car. I'm not sure about that, but I do like the way that this rear bench can flip up to provide storage space and keep uh, valuables like tools away from prying eyes. It's a pity though that the centre rear passenger still only gets a lap belt. At the wheel, this generation Hilux has moved from truck to SUV in both look and feel, especially if you've opted for this flagship Invincible version. That's a perception helped by a minor interior restyle that includes a nicer looking horizontal instrument cluster and to accommodate the clever Toyota Touch multimedia system with its 6.1 inch colour screen, uh, an upper dashboard redesign. It's a nice touch, but I would have preferred to see Toyota attach a greater priority to getting the driving position right as it is a lack of height adjustment for the driver's seat and reach adjustment for the steering wheel, it only goes up and down, uh, remind you that this is still an LCV at heart. Now, any commercial vehicle demands plenty of cabin storage space, which this Toyota provides with a large lockable glove box, a couple of deep cubbies in the dash and a deep storage container between the front seats. There are also decently sized door bins and enough cup holders to deal with the largest thirst. One in each of the four doors, plus two that pop out from the fascia. One on each side. Enough space then for all the coins, passes and tools and all the other stuff that tends to accumulate in the cab of a working vehicle. 
Hilux models are priced from around £16,000, excluding the dreaded VAT, but the double cab variants that most UK customers will want sit in the eighteen dollars to £22,000 price bracket. Now, in terms of comparisons, Toyota appear to have done their sums well. Uh, of all the established rivals, only Mitsubishi's L200 really undercuts this Hilux, and that can be explained away in entry-level form by the fact that the L200 has a feebler 134 brake horsepower engine. Uh, otherwise, uh, the pricing of this Toyota is pretty par for the pickup course. So the 2.5 litre D4D Hilux will cost you around the same as the comparable 2.2 litre TDCI Ford Ranger. While the 3 litre D4D Hilux that I've been driving here is closely price matched to uh, a 190 brake horsepower Nissan Navara and a 3.2 litre TDCI Ranger. Now, whether you choose your Hilux in single cab, extra cab with a couple of occasional rear seats, or fully fledged double cab form, uh, this five seater that we're testing here, it'll come reasonably well equipped. So all models feature manual air conditioning, an MP3 compatible CD stereo, electric windows, heated powered door mirrors, and remote central locking. Safety-wise, uh, only the top 3-litre model gets uh, VSA stability control to complement the standard anti-lock braking system. Um, and though you get the usual driver and passenger airbag complement, side and curtain airbags aren't even on the options list. Uh, neither are deadlocks. All models have four-wheel drive with the ADD auto disconnect differential as standard and this top invincible version also gets a limited slip differential to further enhance its off-road ability. There's a five-speed manual gearbox fitted across the range while this top invincible also gets the option of a five-speed automatic. Now mid and top spec models get the neat Toyota Touch multimedia system with its 6.1 inch uh, color touchscreen for control of audio, Bluetooth and uh, telephone functions. Now uh, this screen also functions as a rear parking camera and if you want you can upgrade to full touch and go status. Now that means that you get a full map pan European satellite navigation system with a Google local search function and the ability to connect to local information services to uh, find out things like live parking information, fuel prices and weather reports. You also get useful speed and safety camera alerts. So how practical will this Hilux prove to be where it really matters? Back here. Let's drop the tough lockable tailgate and find out. Now, though you can fix it in place horizontally, which would be a help for really long loads, you can't drop it down completely because of the chunky bumper. And that can sometimes make loading a little awkward, but at least the bumper incorporates a useful step. Now, as for getting stuff in, well, first, you have to negotiate a pretty hefty loading height of 850 millimeters but once you do there's plenty of space back here one cubic meter in this double cab variant uh, a figure that rises to 1.2 cubic meters if you go for the extra cab and one and a half cubic meters if you go for the single cab Hilux now in this double cab you've got 1545 millimeters of total load space length and 1515 millimeters of total load space width that narrows to 1100 millimeters between the wheel arches. There's 450 millimeters of load space height and a payload capacity of up to 1060 kilograms depending on the variant that you choose. And running costs, well, the Euro 5 compatible engines fitted to this revised model with their diesel particulate filters are a tad more frugal than before. Uh, so the 2.5 D4D uh, now manages a 10% improvement to 38.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, while this 3 litre D4D manages uh, 36.7, a figure that falls to 32.8 if you go for the automatic version that I've been driving here. Now, those are pretty good returns for a vehicle of this size and weight, and CO2 emissions are uh, pretty much class leading. So the 2.5 D4D manages 194 grams per kilometre, while the 3 litre D4D um, uh, has 203 grams per kilometre, and the 3 litre D4D Auto, uh, well, the worst that you'll manage is with that vehicle, and that's 227 grams per kilometre. 
Now, service intervals are every 24 months or 20,000 miles, and there's a three year 60,000 mile warranty. As you'll probably know if you're a potential buyer, uh, because pickups are classified as commercial vehicles, they have a low benefit in kind rating from the taxman, despite offering pretty much all the comforts and space of an ordinary car. Now that uh, tax loophole has changed a little uh, and closed a little in recent years for those classified as employees, but it still exists for the self-employed who can, if registered, also claim back the VAT on the asking price. Now, you can see why pickup sales continue to rise. They're practical, tax efficient, and more car-like than ever before. Too car-like? Well, if you're worried on that score, then this Hilux will suit you perfectly. The most recent changes to this smarter, more frugal Euro 5 compatible model have made it a slightly more practical day-to-day -day tarmac tool, but never far below the surface is the rugged toughness that has carried this vehicle to the most inhospitable parts of the globe. From Alaska to the Sahara to the Australian outback, this is the vehicle of choice for people who need to get the job done. Drive one and you can see why.